Aloha board. My name is Luca Mossman. Uh, I come from the island of Hawaii, uh, Moku, Hilo, and uh, Aupua, Honohonui. I, I come here in support of the Haena CBSFA rule package. Uh, to me, this, this Malama Aina initiative is not just to protect our natural resources, our marine resources. To me, it's to protect our traditional Native Hawaiian practices. Uh, we've all seen what happens to our resources when we stray away from our kupuna's traditional ways in, in harvesting and, and malaming the aina. Um, when the culture starts to dissipate, so does the resource. And this initiative, and I commend the haena community to put in putting this forward in their determination, this initiative is the first step for, to, adapt, to, to adapt our kupuna's ike in our current state system. Um, and if this is the route that in which we have to uh, take care of our resources um, in a moku-based system, then I support it. And it's not perfect, but us Hawaiians, we're very fluid. Uh, we, we observe our resources and we adapt our rules in accordingly. And that's why I'm here to support that. Thank you guys, mahalo. Thank you. Um, my name is Kukana Kamato, and I am from um, Waimanalo, also part of Nakua Aina O Waimanalo, who we are the people of Waimanalo, and we are the backbone of our area. Um, I just wanted to share that as a Native Hawaiian, and with the Native Hawaiian rights to gather and to access certain resources, you know, I, I hear a lot of Hawaiians throw that around very much, and um, I just wanted to state that from my understanding as being a student at the University of Manoa and to being a mother to five children, for whom are boys that will be the leaders of their family and a daughter, um, I would like them to understand also that, you know, through the understanding of education, that Native Hawaiian practices, you know, you, you malama your area. And it is being mahaoi if you're going into somebody else's area to harvest something without permission. And so, you know, when I went to Haena and they took us to see all these different areas, I noticed that there were um, some of the tourists, you know, kind of floating around over there trying to see what they could in, the, in that area in the front, yeah, by the coastal area. And when for me, as an Hawaiian from Wamanalo and very familiar with Makapu'u and Sandy Beach, yeah, that's water I won't go into because, you know, I understand that it can be dangerous. But for these visitors that come to our Aina, they don't understand that, you know? And so putting themselves in risks of being injured. So at that area where this Pu'uhonua is, um, the lifeguard from Ke'e came and warned them in the ocean. You know, to be careful over here because the waves are very high. And so I just wanted to share that with you because you guys are speaking about that in an earlier point of this hearing. Um, also, I, I wanted to share that through research at Manoa, it was, um, it suggests that Haena's generational people were actually there before the first colonizing Polynesians. And so to still have that that practice to still have that living culture is so oh my god, you know? And being a child of Waimanalo, I would like to have that knowledge of my place. I seek that knowledge of my place. And as one of the teachers shared about being an urban child, I guess I am that too, because I live on this island. You know, I've seen the decline in my own ocean. You know, my grandfather was a fisherman, my great-grandfather, my great-grandmother, all of them fished right across the street of their home at Kaiona Beach. And all the things that Waimanalo faces today, the exploiting of the beach areas by day, by tourism and group tourism, group tourism now, that don't follow the laws that, that's been established for them, you know, to night when you have outsiders coming in and raping our reefs as our fish sleep, you know, all that kind of stuff. That's what we face right now. Each community across Hawaii is facing something with their resources in their ocean. And in Waimanalo, not only do our community members, our tutus, our papas and everything, 
access that resource, that ice box, so do our homeless people. So when it's being tapered with like that, and not following laws and stuff like that, you know, that's, is that what Haena's future might be without something like this? You know, and so this is really important. You know, it's important all through our state, and we are starting with Haena, and I'm here to say that I support their rules for their CBSFA. Mahalo. Hello, my kako. Uh, my name is Kalani Kalima. I too come from Waimanalo. Nakua Aina uh, Waimanalo fully supports the community of Haena and their right to protect and preserve the ocean resources. They have the community's best interest in mind, and that is to perpetuate the values of our kupuna, to care for our natural resources, and make sure that it will be there for future generations to come. Ahupua of Waimanalo, as you had heard from Kukana, many of the same problems that Haena has been dealing with. We focus our efforts on confronting night divers from outside of our community. We have had several successful engagements that allowed us to warn those who practice overfishing, illegal fishing, and possible turtle poaching. And we will not stand anymore for fishing violations in our waters. We have been spreading awareness to the greater community of what's been happening in our ocean, often under the cover of night. We have collaborated as, with HPD, with DOCARE, the LNR, and uh, NOAA, and also with our city council and uh, state leg uh, legislative representatives so that we can have this uh, kind of collaboration that we believe exacts change. This is what Hyena seeks. Nakuaina Waimanalo will continue to support all of the com communities of Hawaii who seek to preserve and protect our natural resources from Mauka to Makai. Mahalo nui for your continued support in this issue. Let us adopt what they created, adapt this to every Ahupua, for adapt uh, these fishermen and their families to the needs of the community. Put the kuleana in their hands and let the ocean flourish again. Mahalo nui. Aloha mai kākou. I'm Hanaki Hilati Springer, Kama'aina of Ka'upulehu in North Kona. I had the pleasure and privilege, the inspiration, and the instruction of attending the October 3rd Division of Aquatic Resources hearing in Haena. As I did that night, I stand in support of this proposal before you by the Haena community. Mahalo nui. Well, my name is uh, Nephi Ohai. Uh, we're a coolie fisherman. I'm from Kauai, born and raised in Kapa'a. I went to school with a lot of kids from Hanalei, Haena. We fished in Hawaiian waters for a coolie for over 70 years. And we fish Hanalei a lot. One uh, <clears throat> important thing we learned uh, over the years and I used to tell my dad, you know, I went to college, and so um, as far as conservation is concerned, uh, I'm educated, you know, I know a lot about it, but I, I don't. Uh, what I thought was the right thing proved to be not the right thing. Um, in Hawaiian uh, culture, it's important that you harvest. And the ocean is like a garden. You have to nurture it, and you have to harvest. The ancient Hawaiian culture had rules and regulation, so when to fish, when not to fish. But they did have to harvest. And in all agriculture, any kind of agriculture, it's important that you harvest and you take care of your ground. And we fished. Uh, in Hanalei a long time, and now there are rules being proposed to limit the size of the boat. Years ago, uh, we built bigger boats so that we can feed our families and provide fish for other people who cannot fish. And what fish we catch in Hanalei goes all over the islands. And when the fish comes into Hanalei, you have to harvest it. If you don't, the schools get smaller. I'm not against families wanting to take care of the area in front of their homes and to eat fish from that area. But that area alone 
if you fish it commercially, cannot take care of those families on a full-time basis. Um, like the taro that's grown in Hanolei, it's too much to feed that one family, in the raised taro. They send it outside. Other, pe other people benefit from the raising of taro in Hanolei. When a coolie comes into Hanolei Bay, it should be harvested, and it's a big school, and we can feed thousands of people with that. And we always leave fish for those who come out to help us. The Haraguchi family, the Akana family, the Taihuk family. These are all fishermen families. We always share with them whenever they come out. Uh, we have uh, things happening on the land, already been mentioned about uh, the use of fresh water that affects the ocean and affects the limo growth from Napili on Maui all the way up to La Peru. I fly that area a lot and over the years I've seen the, the limo turn green from the runoff, from the construction runoff and the fertilizer runoff. It just fertilizes the ocean and this green limo took over, the Akuli disappeared. And, uh, and they blame us, but we didn't cause that. Uh, it's important that uh, our coolie grounds be kept open, not just for me. I'm, I'm an old guy already. I won't be fishing much longer, but for you, for the children, they need a place to fish our um, The island of Kaholawe has been closed. We have a lot of sections around the island that's being closed, cannot fish a coolie. Robinson wants to close all around, Ni Hao, three miles out. No one can fish a coolie. And is, is that what we want for, uh, uh, for our children? Since uh, tourism came into Hawaii, uh, all the islands that have been affected by the tourist boats, they run right over our coolie schools. Sometimes we load it with net on our skiffs, we're waiting for the fish to move in. And we see them coming down the coastline right for the fish. I'm in the airplane. And I tell my dad on the boat, hey, these guys are going to run right over the fish. Wave them out. So they all take off their towels and their shirt, they wave them out to go around us. No, they all look in shore and they go right over the fish. Now, we cannot fish Polehali, we cannot fish Kalalao on the Napali coast because the tourist boats go up and down there, run over the fish. So what happens to me and my family? What happens to you and your family? If your children want to fish, where are they going to fish? I'm not against having a conservation area here so you could fish offshore and feed your family. That's not the problem. If you go out two miles, three miles over a large area, you affect the open sea and you affect the fishing grounds. Now these, the guys that do scuba that I know, and when we scuba, we find that there's a yellow tapi and the spotted sea bass that we did not bring into these islands. These species were brought into the islands that are affecting the islands and eating the manpachi, <coughs> eating the kona crab, eating the other species because these yellow, the yellow perch is very aggressive. Now the skin divers, the scuba divers, harvest these. Without them, there's no limit. There's no restriction. There's no uh, arresting this endangered, these uh, aggressive species. So I believe that uh, uh, scuba diving should be allowed. It, we have rules. If I can, uh, so you're going off, we're talking about the high-end rules. So can you yeah. focus it towards the high-end rules? So we're hoping that uh, we can leave Hanalei open so that we could fish our coolie in the bay. I had already invested years, old, years ago, we built a big boat, 58-footer. I got a, another boat coming up. It's a kawaii, named after where I come from. It's 80 feet. So we have to compete with what's going on in order for us to survive. The best akuli fishermen in Hawaii are local boys. 
They can take the water. They're not afraid of shark. I'm the last one to go in the water. I always tell my crew go in first. <laughs> but you need to have a place for them to fish. You need to give them opportunities to fish. We have 165 ahi boats in the islands. Most of, most of them are not local crew. And they fish ahi, but can you afford to eat ahi? The price of ahi is really high. It's only akuli and the diving fish that can support the industry and support the people. So we're asking that as you manage your area, if you leave Hanalei open so that we can harvest and feed all the people of Hawaii, not just a small group. That's all. My name is Betty Chu Go. My father was uh, Charles Kenny Chu. He was born in December 1913 in Hyena. And his mother was born in uh, Kalalau Valley. His father was from China. And being the first child of that union, he was in the traditional manner gifted to his grandparents. So he was the lucky one, as my auntie says. He was the lucky one. He got to live in Hyena year round. And they only came during the summer. And their father would drive them down in the Model T or whatever. And the first thing they would do is they'd run to the ocean and they'd roll down the sand dunes, and they just loved it out there. And my grandmother, she was the best hei fisherman in Hyena, and she really, really missed Hyena, but she had to live in Kapa'a, where her husband had a tailor shop. So she would always come to Hyena in the summertime. Um, unfortunately, I, I wasn't, I did not live here for most of my life. Uh, I retired uh, from a job on the mainland, but now I, I can live here. And I helped my dad through his uh, last two years. And he would always tell me, we would come back often to visit, and he would always tell me the stories about how families would be responsible for their area. And if only people nowadays would hold true to that philosophy, we wouldn't need city and county workers to clean the beaches, right? We wouldn't need other people to mow areas in front of our properties. And that's what held true. And keeping in your area, fishing for your, only your needs for the day, that was the lifestyle. And they lived off the land. A treat to him was having bread and jelly because every day they ate fish and poi. And he ate fish and poi all his life, even though he lived for a long time here on Oahu. That was his diet. He lived to 97 years old. And he, um, years ago, he was given a copy of the book Hyena. And a few weeks later, we asked him, well, did you read the book? And he says, yes. Uh, well, did you read it all the way, you know, all the way through? He says, no, I, I don't need to read it because I know the ending. I know the ending. And it was a very sad ending for him. And so today, he would be so very proud of my cousin Press and his group of supporters who are pushing forward. Just all they want is just a little fraction of this whole wide world, oceans. Just asking for a little fraction to preserve the old ways. And maybe that will eventually be determined to be the best way for the future. We shall see, but hopefully you will help us in, in, and approve this. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair, my name is Mike Sir. I've been a fisherman for a while. Uh, two things. I ask that the committee members make a provision for uh, taking the uh, invasive species in this closed area. 
you know, there's no reason to close this area down if you're going to let all this invasive species take over the area. So we're asking for, for uh, special provision to uh, take invasive species only. And then number two was the Hanalei rule. Is it 15 feet, the boat, William? 14. 14. Are we referring to a boating rule? There's a provision regarding net fishing um, on the, the vessel uh, lake of 14 feet, but that would not apply to Hanalei Bay. Nothing in the package applies to Hanalei Bay. Yeah, I was just here looking out for Mr. Ohai's best interest because his boat is 58 feet, and if they came out with that 14 foot <coughs> rule, he would be. So this would be like on the beach, from yeah. Bakua, yeah. KA, yeah. or any of those places, right? Yeah. We just need a clarification on that. Thank you. Aloha, Mr. Isla, board members. My name is Pamela Lota Fuji'i. I live in the Ahupua of Kuleo'o. I am a direct descendant of James W. and Louisa Lota, James Kapio Lehua, Pico Ula, Ikalani, and Juliana Keola Laulii Alapai. Lota. My kupuna are gone now, but their teachings are still with me. Their legacy is in Haena. My kupuna were original members of the Hui Kuai Ana o Haena. There were 38 Native Hawaiian families that purchased land in Haena so that they could grow their kalo. The land and the ocean fed them, their communities and their extended families. One thing that we were taught, we only took what we needed from the ocean. We always left behind, we always shared with other people. We never took for ourselves, but it was always to feed the community and our families. I strongly support the Hui O Makaaina and the Haena CBSFA rules. I asked that the board and Mr. Isla that you consider passage of these laws. We need these rules to protect the areas that we have. Passage of these rules will empower the community to protect, preserve, and perpetuate our resources for future generations. Mahalo. Uh, all <coughs> chair board, uh, thank you people, supporters for and outside there and people in here. Tell you thank you for all you did there. My name is Henry Shangwell. I'm president of the Ever Nemo Project. Honolulu is one of the worst places or if you want to say it, don't follow Honolulu. Because <laughs> right now, from the leeward coast, from Manolo Bay to Yosabe of Macau, we have lost our natural resources. And why? Development, overpopulation, new diving gears. And we are making the rules, you are making the rules, in 2004, I met with Hyena, and I met with them at Max Space, Momomi, uh, and we were discussing what we were losing at that time. In 2006, I had a bill, I had, I had a bill that came in act, and it's still in effect. But the way I went about it was different from what we are doing now, because I believed in you folks. And I, I think it's too long, two administrations where these people in Hyena have not gotten the rules straight enough. Your board might have changed, but you still got the same people working for you. And they went be beyond 2006. You know what the LNL told me? He said, Henry, we go our way. It's going to take a year. It's going to same way like you do the legislation. Then five years later, they told me, hey, developers, we're going to build. 
a canal in your area. I said, what? After all this stuff, you're telling us we're going to change all? You know, we believed in you folks. And I said, you know what? Let's take it to the legislature. And that's what we did. And, you know, I look at Diana, you know, and they've been waiting eight years. In fact, they've been waiting since 2004 when I first met them. Talk to me about the limo. Talk to me about our natural resources. Tell me what we're doing. Instead of planting trees, instead of planting grass, instead of bringing the water back through the areas, we are planting concrete foundations. You know why, Willie? Take your water back from the leeward side. I got 11,400 homes coming up in an agriculture area. You know, what people don't understand is this. If it's dry, if it doesn't have the water. And how can you make all these foundations without fresh water? How can you make cement without fresh water? Okay, so uh, I support Hyanna. You see that little kid I was carrying? We doing it for him and his sister. So I ask you to please support Hyanna and Allah, Allah to everybody in your mouth. Uh, going to a few meetings with community organizations, looking at management uh, ideas like Awana here and uh, Big Island got a lot of them. Uh, from Minoli all the way up to uh, Pool Point, Point, you got uh, groups and management areas that's happening. You know, I, I I can see that because of Western contact, we got to do something where it was wrong. But as one Hawaiian, I don't want to be blamed for that. So I think all these bands and all these managements and all these titles put on top of land and water, I should be exempt from that. I shouldn't be a criminal practicing my traditional practice go catch fish. So I support a lot of these bands and a lot of these projects, but I as a Hawaiian should be exempt from that. Not for commercial reasons, for subsistence and religious practice. I should be exempt from all of these statewide. And it shouldn't be uh, an agreement where we get overlooked at that part because, like anything else, it'll start running like rash and we won't be able to stop it. So I'm trying to say that this board has a responsibility to look out for my rights as a native gatherer and not as commercial purposes. I mean, you go tell the American Indians they can't catch their salmon. You know, I'm a vet like they were. I was in the military with Indians too. Now, I don't like the idea about defending our country and I'm coming home and being shortchanged about my rights and my practices. So I just would say that, yes, I support these so-called management areas to preserve resources, but I am a resource too. My practice should be preserved. So that understanding of subsistence for religious practices gathering should happen. Uh, when you make your decision, I hope that's part of the language in all your management decisions about my practice to the land. And that's what I came here all the way from the Big Island to say, because you're going to be barraged with that, and you've already been doing it, and it's already starting on every island. So don't spread it around, man. You've got to exempt me from all of these rules and regs about protecting things that I had nothing to do with destroying in the first place. So that's my point of view. Thank you. Aloha. My name is Rafael Bergstrom. Um, I'm a self-proclaimed proclaimed crappy fisherman. Uh, <laughs> I grew up in California along a beautiful uh, riparian protected area, the American River in Sacramento. And most of the time when I tried to fish for trout in the lakes or salmon in the river, my line got stuck in the tree or wrapped around my neck or something like that. So I understand how difficult it is to fish. Um, what I was lucky enough to grow up with also was that I had a family that was deeply connected to the resources, to the land, and taught me that. And when I moved here five years ago, something that drew me immediately to Hawaiian culture was the Ahupua system and understanding this connectivity between everything, between all of our natural resources. And I think what we get away from when we allow commercial fishing, sport fishing, is that connectivity. And if I can't go out and fish myself, do I really have a right to eat that fish? I don't know. 
maybe I do if I go down and I'm, I'm working uplands and I'm part of the connectivity that's helping protect the, the fisheries down below. But it's very complicated in Hawaii too because we go from very different biomes very quickly around this island. So community-based management is so necessary because top-down management where it's just a blanket across all these biomes is just, it doesn't work. It's not practical. And giving the power back to a community who, who does live there, who understands it, I think is the only way that we can go if we're going to see any change in seeing these resources be, come back to life. Because I came here 20 years ago as a kid um, to Kauai, my first trip to Hawaii, and I snorkeled at tunnels and ke, and I went back 20 years later and it's not the same. And I truly believe that in order to go back, we have to find that connectivity again. And I think this is a step in that direction. And if it means that I don't get to eat the fish because I can't buy it in a fish market, or I can't buy it at Costco, so be it. I would rather say, I would rather go to the community that is catching that fish and say, look, I'm working to preserve the, the land upland because I'm a crappy fisherman and I'm gonna help you do things to help our urban areas protect your resource down here and maybe you'll invite me to your fish fry and I get to eat fish that way. And that's fine with me. So I fully support the Haena community and I hope that this persists around the islands. Thank you.